Hi, I'm Monica. I'm going to be your tour guide today. We're going to go ahead and start the tour here at the Davenport Building or Building A. Um, this is basically an administrative building, so you won't do much here, but just let you know where this is at. So if you ever need to come here, you can come here and do that. Also, when you come, um, a lot of times our parking lot, you can park wherever you'd like. You might need to do some creative parking. Um, that's fine. You're not going to get towed. Um, however, just make sure you don't park someone in um, or make it hard for them to get in and out of their vehicles. Um, also, be sure to bring any valuables and put them in the back of your trunk um, out of sight. There is a lot of traffic in this area. So we don't want ever to give somebody a reason to break into your car and look in different things that you might have. Also come ready to get dirty. Wear some nice closed-toed shoes. You don't mind getting wet, maybe poopy. Um, you can wear shorts or tank tops or shirts. Um, you have your volunteer shirt, so you're always welcome to wear that too, so you're easily identified as a volunteer. Now we're at Building B, or reception. This is where you're going to enter and exit the facility each time you come. Sometimes the gates may be closed or there may be a sign that says, do not enter or facility closed. We are open 1130 to 7 to the public every day of the week. To volunteers, you're allowed in here um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. So go ahead and come on in. Um, you're welcome to come through. Um, and this is the door that you'll enter to go into the facility. Uh, also, there's usually a lot of dog traffic through here, so make sure um, when you see dogs coming through to stop and ask before you meet them. Um, all of our dogs are going through training and they're learning how to meet people. We love using volunteers for friendly stranger activities so that they can learn to meet people with all four on the floor and sitting nicely. So this property is um, the old city shelter property. We now lease it from the city. Um, because we still lease it from the city, um, we do still use part of the uh, kennels for city dogs. Um, so behind you would be all of the dogs that are Austin Animal Center dogs. So you will not be interacting with those dogs or taking them out, unless of course you're also an Austin Animal Center volunteer. That's great, we've got lots of dual citizens here, so feel free to go through their orientation so you have uh, more dogs to walk as well. Um, back here is where your dogs and experience is going to start. We also have our new matchmaker facility here. Um, this is to help match large dogs with um, adopters. So if you ever run into somebody who's looking for a large dog or has questions about the dogs, you can always refer them here to the matchmaker tent. If someone's not here, there's some seating where they can have a seat and wait for the matchmakers to come back. So this is the courtyard with all the dogs. We have three separate buildings here, um, which are also referred to as strays. So behind us is stray one, two, and three. That's just, this used to be the old stray side of the city shelter, and we um, still go with that. If you notice, there are some signs that say Treat Street and Best Friends Boulevard. Um, we want to get away from calling them strays. That doesn't seem very fun and friendly, um, but we need you new volunteers to help the old timers get over that bad habit of calling them strays. But just so you know, when you hear those uh, terms, what they refer to. Um, and there are dogs on both the inside and the outside of each building. Each building also has a pass through here, which contains several important things. Um, your mentors will go over these with you when you go through a mentor session if you're walking dogs. But just in case you decide not to walk dogs, you should know what these items are. Um, in the pass throughs, we always have leashes. Um, that's important in case you hear somebody yell, I need a leash, um, there might be a loose dog around. So that's where you can find one of those. Um, in the pass throughs are also tennis balls and toys and hand sanitizer, um, as well as the whiteboards. Again, your uh, mentor will go through the whiteboard and how to use that. But basically the whiteboard lists each dog in those kennels, um, what color, color they are, um, so you know who you can and can't walk, any type of equipment they're gonna be wearing, and then when the last time they were out was. Um, here we make sure all the dogs get out at least once in the morning before 11, and once between five and eight, so that's how we track that. Of course, we would love for the dogs to get out four and five times a day, so um, don't not take a dog out just because it has a time on it. So this is the truck port. This is where the magic happens. No, not really. But a lot of really important things happen back here. And this is one of the first places you can start volunteering that we need a lot of help. Um, back here, 
We do our food prep, so we're getting ready to feed the dogs every morning. Um, we also wash the bowls back here um, and do donation sorting as well. Um, we have 150 dog kennels here, so up to 160 dogs at any time. So we need lots of help back here. We have one person who's able to feed the dogs, so if we have volunteers helping them every morning, um, it can go a lot faster. They can get fed earlier. And then the bowls, that means we have about 300 bowls every day that need to be washed. So we'd love your help to come back here. Um, Andrea works back here during the mornings. She's here usually from 8 a.m. until about 2 p.m. every day. And then on the weekends, Brian and Jean are our volunteers that do that, and they would all love your help to do that. Um, also, we have some yoga mats over here as well. We use those in the kennels where um, the, their dogs are a little bit older or maybe they have problems standing. They just need a little extra cushy or um, support for standing. Um, we go through about 50 of those yoga mats a day. So we can absolutely use your help scrubbing those down with some bleach water, hosing them off, and then drying them. And again, you can always ask anybody how to do that and they can help you do that. Um, and again, our community is so supportive here in Austin, so we get lots and lots of donations. Um, but we need help sorting through those donations um, to make sure they're getting put where they need to go so they're not getting ruined, um, the birds aren't getting into them, they're not getting wet from the rain. Um, so you can always come back and help with that as well. And again, you can always ask people how um, you can help or where things go. So one of the most important things about um, coming back to the truck port, one of the best things you can do to help us out and do a good deed if you want, is laundry. As you can see over here, we've got some dirty laundry already piling up. This is usually secondary laundry after we've already started piling up inside. Um, we go through um, tons and tons of laundry. We have 150 dog kennels. So we're changing the bedding out every morning and every night, especially during the winter or when it's really rainy. We tend to have bigger and fluffier towels and bedding, so it takes a little longer for them to process through. So always when you come in, uh, make sure the washer and dryers are running. If there's um, laundry to be folded, that we're folding it up and putting it away um, so the next person can come in and do that. Also, if you ever see a pile like this, you can just grab a trash bag, fill it up, and then take it home and do the laundry at home too if you'd like. Um, that works out great for us as well. This is known as Puppy Row, otherwise it's the back of Stray 2. Um, what is important back here is this is where we keep most of our puppies and most of our small dogs. Um, this is important because sometimes you'll be walking around, you might overhear a customer say, all they have is big dogs. Um, here, uh, is, we put them back here so people have to kind of look for them. So you can point people back here. However, with the puppies, we don't allow um, adopters to take them out unless it's with an adoption counselor. And we also don't have uh, volunteers take the puppies out that aren't old enough and already vaccinated. So you will see back here some adorable puppies with an X pen in front of them. That is so you can't um, touch them because we know how irresistible they are. Um, and parvovirus is spread through saliva, so we don't want you poking your fingers, getting a little saliva on them, and then poking somebody else and spreading that disease. You'll also see some signs that say Parvo Watch on the kennels. That does not mean the puppies have Parvo. That means we're just watching them because they aren't fully vaccinated and they're the most susceptible to getting Parvo. Um, we also have lots of little dogs, so watch your fingers back here. Don't stick fingers in kennels. Um, that's always really important as well. So this is the area where we have our Subaru play yard. We use that for our dogs playing with life program, which is our play group time. We take dogs and in mass, put them in a play group um, where they get to have fun and play with each other. They learn dog social skills and it also gives us a chance to evaluate them as well. Um, it's really fun if you guys ever want to come out and watch the um, play group going on. Um, come on out every morning from 9 to 11 and evening from 4 to 6 we do the play groups. Um, it's really exciting when you get to see a really shy, scared dog um, learn that it's okay to be a dog and start playing. So it's really fun. Um, but this yard you will not, if there's um, dogs playing back here, please don't talk to the dogs or interact with them. Um, that can cause them to get upset with each other um, vying for attention. Also back here is some of our other play yards that you're able to use. We've got a sh one of our shorter play yards. All of the short play yards have a 
uh, tie out in them so the dogs can't jump out like Superman. Um, again, your mentor will go through that with you, but just a reiteration. Um, and then back in the back, we've got our two long play yards, which are great for fun dogs that like to run around, like to play fetch, like to play frisbee, um, stretch your legs a little bit more. Um, as you notice on those uh, play yards though, you can't see anything. So make sure before you open the gate to look, if you can't see all the way through to the back of the play yard, call back and ask, is there a dog in here? Um, and if somebody says yes, then obviously don't open that door. We don't want any escapees and we don't want any dog fights to happen. Um, so just make sure to really be watching and looking with your eyes. There's also a lot of traffic coming in and out of here, so be careful. Um, we always give, um, all the dogs will get 10 feet between each other. Um, dogs to adults are um, three feet bubble and then dogs and children are a five feet bubble so just make sure to keep that in mind like i said this is such a high traffic area there is a lot of people coming and going so just like the dog truck port we have a cat truck port but it's not quite as big or messy um, so over here um, we've got our uh, the cat area where we do all of our washing all of our cleaning um, and all of that uh, keep food and things like that in there so definitely go in there this is where you'll be helping a lot with a cattery the one thing to know about in here is they do have a few isolation kennels for kitties um, and a lot of times there might be tubing going across from one side to the other um, please don't unplug that trip over it or restart those nebulizers that's a nebulizer the kitty cats in here have upper respiratory infections. Also, sometimes there's some holes in the cages. Please don't touch inside because you might be cross-contaminating the kitty cats um, when you're in there. So this is the ringworm cattery. This cattery is where you can come and volunteer any day, help the crusty kitties. Even crusty kitties need a little bit of love. Um, but every Tuesday and Friday are their big days. That's when they have their fungus spider parties. So you can come in, help them deep clean the cattery while experienced volunteers give the kitties a little kitty spa and scrub them um, with some lime dip to help them recover from their ringworm faster. They bring treats and sodas and good things like that. Um, while we deep clean the cattery and give the kittens and cats little kitty spas and brush them uh, with lime dip so they can get over their, cat, uh, their ringworm faster. So definitely come check it out. I know a lot of people are worried about getting ringworm. When you're volunteering in there, you're getting so much bleach around. Um, it's really hard to take that home. Um, the one thing that is important to know is if you volunteer in the ringworm cattery that you need to go ahead and make that your last stop of the day. We don't want to get then talk to other dogs and cats and get them ringworm. So this is the Feline Leukemia Sanctuary. Um, you can absolutely volunteer here. We do have a limit of three people at a time in the, in the sanctuary because it's so small. Um, but you're welcome to come and volunteer here. We do ask if, if you're in there and another adopter comes or adopter comes in um, to allow space and for them to fully interact with the kitty cats to go ahead and excuse yourself. The one important thing about the Feline Leukemia Sanctuary is there's two doors. We have those doors there so that um, we can't we don't have any escaped kitty cats. So before you open the second door, make sure you close the first door um, to make sure we don't have any escapees. But these kitties are some of the funnest and nicest kitties in the world. So come in here. If you're out walking dogs and you need a little air conditioning break, um, this is a great place to take a little break. Good boy. Are you? Oh, you're a good girl. You're a good girl. So beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful.